My brother needs to learn to shut his pie hole. Sometimes it's really bad. Um, okay. Here's a nitro how nitro engines work by High Desert Hater for um, Nick Garage. This is a, this particular engine is a point twenty one, and I have various engine pieces here from different engines. Um, basically, it works like a diesel engine and a gasoline engine combined. Um, it's got scavenging strokes like a gasoline engine, and it's compression ignition like a diesel engine. And it's a uh, premixed fuel like a diesel and or uh, like a two-stroke gasoline engine too. Um, basically, the parts we have here are a block and a crankshaft, a piston and connecting rod, and a sleeve head, um, cooling tower and a glow plug somewhere but that glow plug is dead so I'm gonna use another one for this video but basically the uh, crankshaft and the piston is your valve so you got your piston going up and down in here it's compressed it's ignited keeps going up a little bit now it's traveling downward and the exhaust gases come out and the pressure from the crankcase pushes the fuel air mixture in through these holes there's two boost ports two normal ports and these engines don't have a um, piston ring because it's too small to put a dowel pin in there um, uh, basically, just take the uh, crankshaft out fast. Your crankshaft's got a port in it. This is the front, this is the back. Um, air fuel comes in through there after it goes through the carburetor. So it's basically like that. Um, and goes in this hole and the piston is traveling up because that's when suction in the crankcase is happening and that's what pulls in your fuel air mixture and then it's compressed while the piston is going down and then right about now the pressure is big enough for the uh, uh, air to be scavenged into the combustion chamber and then it goes up a little bit and the crank port opens again or the crank port meets up with the port in the block and then the piston's traveling up again and it just repeats itself as the piston moves up and down and the crankshaft turns um, basically for a block this is your block it's got support inside for the uh, cylinder or sleeve deal and it's got a hole for the exhaust and basically after the exhaust leaves the combustion chamber um, through this hole right here these are the scavenging ports this is the uh, exhaust port it goes through the manifold over here and then it bounces back it echoes some of the pressure wave goes through this hole in through this tube to the tank and out your fuel outlet a little bit and that helps pressurize your system at higher pm and basically your uh, piston but depending on how your engine is timed and how you have it set and stuff, your uh, throttle and mixtures and junk like that, your engine will run 
at a max speed of in between like 10,000 and 40,000 RPMs. It's very fast. And then at a low speed of between like 800 RPMs and like 6,000. Those are idle speeds. Um, for a carburetor, you basically have uh, almost like a, a dirt bike carburetor. It's a slide carburetor or rotary carburetor. Right here I have a slide carburetor. <sighs> Pull it open. has three mixture screws, a mid, high, low, and your idle adjustment to keep your idle from going too low. Just pull off the air cleaner, it's just like a, uh, it's just a foam sponge. Um, it's not, it's supposed to sit really nice in there with no openings, like that. It's supposed to sit in there just like that, that's not an opening that's to keep it in there. It's a little plasticky piece. Um, here's a carburetor, air comes in through the venturi like on a normal carburetor, goes in through here into your crank port, and there's a slide to control your speed. Right now I have the idle mixture all the way in, so it's, um, once you get right around here, the uh, pin slides out of that hole, and, um, yeah, don't make, I, I know what this looks like you know, but it's a, uh, you know, yeah, um, and your, uh, motor runs a little bit richer when that happens, so that it, um, can run good at high RPMs, and at low RPMs, because it's a slide carburetor, it's closed on the other side too, and basically that'll act like a choke and low throttle, you know, deal there. So that'll just like suck fuel in too. Like too much fuel in and not enough air and it's like running it with a choke on. So, um, yeah. Basically, that's how Nitro RC car engines work. And now I'm just going to show you some of the parts. This is the crankshaft and its port. You already saw this. This is the sleeve. ABC with an aluminum piston brass sleeve and it's chrome plated on the inside. This is a steel crankshaft, cast iron or aluminum block, composite aluminum or cast iron carburetor with brass needles and stuff, um, and a back plate to keep all your pressure in the crankcase with a little starter pin deal. Starter shaft and plater pin or whatever your engine has. This one has a starter plate. It's basically a pin and a spring and that rides on there like that. It's like a ratchet, you know. Now my finger's catching, now it's just like, yeah. Ow, it's really sharp. I don't know. And then you got a glow plug too for starting it. I don't know if this glow plug is on, though. I don't know if it's a good plug. It's barely good. It's like burnt out most of the way. And then you have your head, and that's where a glow plug is. You have in between one and like eight head shims. Here is your cooling tower, cooling head, heat sink. This is on top of the head, does no ceiling, but it really helps your engine be cooler. And this is your flywheel. As you can see, it has no magnets, but it has two posts for um, your clutch shoes. And yeah, you know, just kind of sits on there like this with a collet. You know, it's collets shoved in there, or it's slid onto the crank, and then you just kind of shove your flywheel on there and then you bolt it down so that it won't move so yeah basically that's a quick simple short description on how nitro rc car engines work